It's been an interesting morning. Uh, we've uh, heard from Snapdeal, we heard from the venture capitalists, and then we've been to the moon and back. So that is quite an interesting session. So we have Shashank from Practo. So uh, you want to get started? Absolutely. Okay, so healthcare is big business, regardless of where you are in the world, and uh, health tech is a big enabler, and Practo is one of the best examples there is of an enabler for the healthcare industry. So Shashank, why don't you uh, start off by telling us, let's start with the, the panel uh, topic. How do you reconcile challenges and opportunities uh, in the industry, and uh, how have you been doing it from Practos vantage point? I think uh, we were a little lucky. Uh, we started off in 2008, and uh, in 2008, uh, we were out of college, um, completely bootstrapped. There was no VCs around. There were no companies doing health tech uh, in India or even largely outside as well. So it was a completely barren place. Um, what we realized, though, was health is a very important aspect of everyone's lives. And I was touched by a personal incident that happened in my own life where my father needed a re knee replacement surgery and I had to get his reports to a doctor in the US. I really struggled hard to get his paper-based records to the doctor in the US. Uh, I had to take photographs of the paper, attach it, attach it to my Gmail account, then send it out to the, to the doctor. I, I thought there should be an easier way. So I go back to my doctor and ask him for um, an email, right? I tell him that, hey, can you just email me my records, my dad's records? And he looks at me and says, you know, sorry, I can't email it to you because my software doesn't have an email button. This is 2008. And I'm a, I'm a computer science grad, right? I can't take that. It's three lines of code. Um, so I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you know, there's a software that you have. You know, this is a huge hospital and you don't have an email button. So that the moment of realization was that healthcare was not uh, centered around the patient. Patient was not, you know, healthcare systems are not centered on the patient. I was wondering, why was this health system prepared if it did not cater to the needs of the patient? Because the, so the software was made looking at the needs of the provider. So we believe that there are a lot of opportunities. So such, such as that, that particular constraint became an opportunity for us. And we started off this uh, company called Practo to create an account for every one of us so that we can have our health records in a digital manner that we can share easily with everyone and anyone. So that was the genesis of Practo. And I think it came out of a constraint that India saw. Yep. So when you actually build Fracto, so who did you have in mind? And is that the same Fracto that you have going on right now? So when we started off Fracto, the only thing, that, uh, only thing that was in our mind is all of us, right? We wanted to create an account. I remember this very moment when I walked into my uh, parents' uh, room, and I saw my dad with a huge file. Uh, it was really this big, it was this thick. And I was very curious, you know, it was a pretty, uh, pretty worn out file. And I asked him, what, this, what is this file? He said, these are all the reports of your of your mother and yourself. So I had, he had my birth certificate and every single health record since then, he had been filing it together. And this big was his file. We all have that. My own health record, right? And I was like, wow. And of course, I felt a lot more love for my dad that day, uh, knowing that he had taken the care to put my files together. But the fact that I would never, ever do that, right? I'm an, I'm an Evernote user. I'm a digital user. I can never imagine myself you know, making this huge file of records for mice or anyone else. So consumer was always center of our plans. Consumer was the reason we entered healthcare. We wanted to disrupt healthcare. But the trick behind Practo was that we didn't start with consumer. We knew that the doctor is the most important part to get him online is very important. If you get the doctor online, everything else around it goes online. So we then focused our efforts on providers. And we focused our efforts on uh, clinics and private practitioners. And we wanted to get them online first. And that's how we built our products. And then we you know, focused on consumers. The other reason for doing that was we believed that consumers will not create health records. Even today, we believe that the reason why Google Health or Microsoft Vault failed was because it forced consumers to go back after their health incident. Imagine going back after a hospital visit and typing in all your records. You're never, never going to do that. It's not the most exciting thing to do. So we believed that it is going to be the enterprises who are going to create records, and patients will only access them with a touch of a button. And that was our entire strategy, and that was our entire thesis. So we focused initially on ensuring that enterprises adopt software, get on a platform, and then expose that to the consumers. And uh, funnily enough, it worked out. So when you started off, you started off for the Indian 
Indian market, right? I mean, it's a different set of consumers, different set of doctors. The healthcare system is different. So, but you've expanded to a whole bunch of different countries now. So, how do you find it in these different in these markets, and how do they differ from uh, yeah. India? India has been lucky. Uh, you know, uh, India got really lucky with its healthcare system. Um, if you think of, about the cost that we uh, we have for our healthcare system, it's 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 uh, definitely I would say much more affordable than many of the other developed countries where healthcare is really expensive. One can have multiple arguments. One thing that India got really lucky with was that the systems that were created for the healthcare uh, you know, enterprises like hospitals or clinics, etc., are being created today in in the internet age. Whereas in the U.S. and other developed countries they have a problem of legacy systems because the systems that were that were made for those healthcare industries were built in the 80s and 90s where it was primarily your offline softwares so because india is india's software and our infrastructure is being created in this new age it creates for interoperability and i believe that's critical for reducing costs and making things affordable in the long term and providing better patient care so there's a thesis that india will actually be able to provide a lot more better patient care and interoperability than the us can because of the lack of legacy systems in India. So would that so, be a challenge as well? Uh, I, think, I think so far it's been a boon for us because we've been able to stitch it together. Um, so the answer to their previous question was, because India has lack of legacy systems, we saw the same thing happening in Philippines and in Indonesia as well. So that, that's why the opportunities there are very similar to India, okay. where there are no legacy systems and we can build things from scratch. Okay. And as Practo moves, it is building at the same time, systems for enterprises and system, I mean, and solutions for consumers. And probably one of the unique companies in the world that has products for both and has market leadership and market share in both the, both the segments. So very excited about it and taking this to more countries is definitely challenging. What kind of feedback have you been getting from uh, customers who, who see your uh, final product, that's the front end, and uh, say healthcare systems or hospitals or doctors who see the back end? So, how, and how do you uh, use that feedback going to evolve your product? Yeah, it's been a phenomenal experience of how you can connect a, an enterprise, uh, a SaaS platform to a consumer marketplace. It's a, you know, and this has never been done before in the world where in healthcare you have connected hospitals, their HIMSs, their EMRs, and private practitioners uh, with a very large market share and consumers and pharmacies and diagnostics and wellness and fitness. So the entire platform is being created and that's extremely uh, new for the entire healthcare industry. Um, and what we are seeing is for the first time synergy is happening between all of these guys, right? So there are doc primary doctors referring to uh, tertiary doctors on the platform um, and there are consumers for whom prescription is being created at the hospital and they're getting reminders on their mobile app and they are able to order medicines and get medicines delivered to their house. So this is synergy is, uh, is very interesting for both consumers and providers and so far we've been getting very good responses. And it's opening up new fronts that have never been seen before. Okay. Um, so we know it's very exciting to go to work every day. Speaking of new fronts, so how, how, do you, uh, how do you foresee scaling up? Because that's the whole point of health tech, right? I mean, meeting a huge unmet demand. At one of this, uh, India, especially rural India, there's there is a massive market that like these demands are not met for the healthcare industry specifically. So, how does somebody like Practor, or how does health tech help digitize healthcare? Yeah, you know, we start with one. Um, so we recently did a uh, cancer day. We celebrated World Cancer Day by ask uh, asking questions about cancer, and there were hundreds and thousands of really high quality questions that were asked, and top doctors answering those questions. Now, one patient who gets an answer can actually solve his cancer problem. So we are really motivated by each and every such story that we are able to touch and these millions of people that we are able to touch. Uh, scaling up is definitely a challenge uh, in health tech, but the opportunity is immense. India is today a $100 billion health market. It's going to be $300 billion by 2020. I think there are a lot of opportunities, so there's a lot of headroom for, uh, for growth in this uh, particular market. Okay. Uh, coming to rural India, mm -hmm. I think rural India has a very different problem than urban India. In, in urban India, our problems are reliability. Is the appointment on time? Is there a high quality doctor? Those are our problems. In rural India, there are no doctors. So the problem is more of, you know, can I avoid going to a quack and taking a steroid shot, right? Can I get just a doctor? 
can I get something affordable because I can't afford the medicines that are being manufactured by these very large pharma companies. So affordability and accessibility are the problems of rural India. The way we are thinking of solving this is very interesting. We have seen that um, in, in urban India, there are a lot of doctors who have time available on their hands. And in rural India, there are patients who have needs, who, are, who don't have doctors. So we're trying to connect the urban supply with the rural demand. And that's a very unique thing that we are uh, focusing on. And with a product called Practo Consult, where people can ask questions and get answers, we are trying this thing out where can we get people from rural India to ask questions and get it answered by urban Indian doctors because they have time on their hands and find them incentive to be ranked higher. With these innovative approaches, we are hoping to uh, okay. solve some of the problems in rural India. But how do you see uh, bridging the connectivity gap? I mean, uh, we have a hard time getting internet access here in this conference uh, venue, right? I mean, uh, right. I'm guessing it's a lot harder in rural India. So how does a company like Fracto bridge that divide? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think there are some things that we can focus on. There are some things that will leave it to uh, either larger company, responsible larger companies to provide uh, the right internet for everyone um, and uh, to the government. I, th I hope with the, these two stakeholders will do that. Coming to um, uh, connectivity, what we have done is we launched a recent product called Practor Tab. It's a very interesting hardware device that we now give doctors that works completely offline. Realizing the fact that online software might not scale to 100 cities in India to really the small cities, we built this tablet of ours which works completely offline, just works on Practor uh, to help the doctors streamline their uh, work, uh, workflow and provide great consumer experience. This tablet is actually selling better in tier two and tier three cities than in tier one cities. And we're selling thousands of these each month and they're doing really well. And we're finding that these hardware devices are finding more accessibility, I mean, uh, acceptance in to tier two and tier three. So what it tells me, is, tells me is that, you know, innovation is being accepted not just in the top 10 cities in India, but in many other cities in India. And two, there are solutions out there, okay? There are solutions that can tackle the connectivity problem and still provide uh, the solution. Okay, so Shashank, sounds like you guys are doing a lot of things. Uh, and uh, we were talking earlier and you said that uh, Practo is also experimenting with uh, spas and salons and fitness centers. So uh, aren't you worried about too much diversification that could split your original focus? Also, how much diversification is too much diversification? See, I, th I think the important question for us is, you know, for us, it's the consumer. So we want to take consumers from being sick to becoming better. We want to take consumers from being unfit to becoming fit, so that tomorrow they don't fall sick, right? So we are both focused on cure and on uh, and on, um, on on prevention, but the problem is the following: I think so. Both have to exist together. I don't think they they can exist independently. I think both have to exist together. Prevention prevents cure, and better cure can ensure prevention. So it has to work together. So we are probably one of the first platforms that actually brought these two things together in the world. Coming to the cure, also, it's very complex. Healthcare is far more complicated than any other other segment. If you, go, if you want to go from being sick to being well, you first go to a primary doctor. He will then recommend a specialist for you. Then you'll go to the hospital. They will then recommend tests for you. Then you'll go to the laboratory. The, once the diagnostic tests come out, then you know, medicines are ordered for you. Then once you take those medicines, then you become better. So you have to go through, you know, so it's not siloed to one place. You have to serve all these needs. So our focus is can we make sure that in a very simple and easy manner, a consumer can go from being sick and identifying himself to becoming better. So unfortunately, our mandate is to do many things uh, because of the complexity of the healthcare ecosystem. But you know, I think we are, uh, uh, we are up for it. So we are, we are, we are going to okay. get it done. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the drawbacks of the healthcare model, it's, uh, especially startups, have been slow to monetize. What do you say to that? What's your uh, viewpoint? Absolutely. I think uh, monetization is extremely critical. So when we started off, we started off out of college. Uh, no capital, nothing whatsoever. So we had, to, we had to sustain our business from day one. There's no one to angel us uh, or give us some angel money, etc. So what we did was we built our businesses in a way in which they are, they are you know, very sustainable. So we built our Practo Ray, our product, as a SaaS model, and we would basically sell the product, generate revenues, then hire engineers. Hire engineers, sell more products, and so it was extremely important to make sure that each business is sustainable. And I'm, you know, I, I don't know if you're going to ask this or not, but this environment is ex exactly the environment that we saw in 2008, where you can't solve problems through capital. You solve problems through innovation, you solve problems through products, you solve problems through sales, you solve problems through engineering, you solve problems through those means. That's the exciting part of entrepreneurship. The exciting part is not raising money. 
You know, the exciting part of entrepreneurship is going out there, building a product, going and giving those products out, seeing the reaction of the customers. That's what makes your job happy. That's what makes you happy. And it's not about uh, you know the, uh, the the coverage that you get on on a fundraise. Um, so just to you know uh, complete that thought, it's, it's I think it's extremely critical for us to uh, uh, you know make sure that the business is each part of the business is uh, sustainable and profitable, and that's how we built it. Uh, speaking about raising money, we heard from VCs uh, three of them a while back, and uh, they were of the opinion that things are looking better now, right? Although uh, there's not so much money chasing a whole lot of startups, but the money is more focused. And the advice I think to startups was that you build a good product, investors will come to you. Yeah. So what's been your experience, and what would your advice be? Do you see that also? I mean, do you see the funding? How has the funding environment changed? And what would your advice to uh, startups looking for funding be? I think this is the best time for the Indian uh, ecosystem, and I'm loving it. Uh, you know, having started in 2008, I've seen eight years of the, how the markets have done. This is the best time for the Indian ecosystem. It, it's going to mature itself very, very well. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's great time for everyone. I think the right people will do the right things. The right people will start up. The right people will join startups. The right investors will invest. The right people will do the right things. The right people will buy the right products. So I think the right things are going to happen. The, what happened last year was very good because it got the government focused on startups. It gave startup ecosystem a really big lift. Now it's all about the right things will happen now. So I think a lot less mistakes will happen. A lot of good right things will happen. I think l last year we took two steps forward, one step back. This year I think we'll take three steps forward mm -hmm. and hopefully no steps back. Fair enough. One of the VCs made a good point actually. I mean, from here till Central Bangalore, uh, there are like 20 business opportunities that you will see if you're an uh, entrepreneur or if you're an aspirational entrepreneur. So, but the, the challenge is the implementation, the execution of it. So how do you go from ideating to execution? I think this is where uh, most of the most of the they say that the star, that the graveyard is probably the richest place in the world because some of the best ideas died there, right? Uh, it's primarily because people take their ideas and never implement them. Uh, it is you know, I, and I find that you know over analysis as the biggest paralysis for people. Um, if you like an idea, just go talk to customers and start building it out. I mean, it doesn't take that much effort, and once you figure things out, it doesn't work. You move on. So a lot of time gets wasted in trying to validate and validate and validate. Your best validation is, will your customer pay you money? Can your model be scalable? Is your product scalable? That's the only two things you need to answer for. If you find product market fit and you have a big enough market, problem solved. If your vision is big enough, problem solved. You have to go as fast as possible there. I think the best entrepreneurs are the people who, are the people who really want to get stuff done. They are not you know, who, who are looking to hang around or, or give conditions saying, if I get funded, if this happens to me, if this customer says yes, then I'll do it. You know, startup is not about conditions. You don't get to put conditions, okay? You get to do your thing and things are out of your control, are out of your control, okay? You can grab in the morning and do X number of meetings. You can grab in the morning and do X number of coding. Just focus on that and get that right and left, leave everything else outside. We have never written to an investor, okay? They've all reached out. We have never written to a media house, okay? We have all reached out. So the point is never chase any of them. They will reach out to you. Okay. Your product is your marketing tool. I think that's a fantastic note to end this session with. Thanks so much, Sashan. Yeah. It was a pleasure.